the agenda of Paul. There were significant differences in the agenda of Jesus to that of Paul. One of the most important verses in the New Testament is Matthew 5.17. In 5.17, Jesus states why he is here. Matthew uh, 5, 17 through 19 says, uh, Don't think I came to abolish the law and the prophets. I came not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Uh, it would be easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for a jot or tittle to pass away from the law. The law that he is referring to is the Torah, which is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible and what Christians called the Old Testament. The Hebrew Bible and the prophets Jesus speaks of comprise the foundation of Judaism, Jesus is saying, think not that I have come to challenge Judaism, but to fulfill it. Jesus was a reformer. His mission was to bring the Jews back to the old ways of theology. He goes on to say, you change not a jot or a tittle in scripture. What does that mean? That, that means that a jot and a tittle are the little decorative squigglies that you put onto a Hebrew letter he says you don't change, a, he doesn't say you don't change a law, you don't change a, a philosophy or a thought or a paragraph or a word or even a letter. You don't change the tiniest little part of the law or the prophets. You change nothing. This is what he wanted to get back to that practice of, of, of what the scriptures say. Because Jesus is depicted as rebutting in advance Christian beliefs about what Jesus came to do. Paul says the exact opposite of Jesus. Paul could not convince Jews that Jesus was divine, so he went outside of Israel to the Gentiles. A Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew. And wasn't getting any place again uh, for two main reasons. Number one was the dietary law. He restricted the things that they enjoyed and ate all the time. But the biggest one was the circumcision law. In the first century or so, most all Christians were Jews. But Paul said you don't have to keep the Jewish law. That's a legalism and you're saved by the blood of Christ, not by keeping the Jewish law. So that he admitted Gentiles without circumcising them, without requiring them to observe Jewish dietary policies or going to the synagogue on Saturday. As a result, there developed what we call today two confessions or two denominations, Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. But it took a long time for that bifurcation to take place. A lot of the so-called Gentile Christian church were Jews, but they didn't continue observing Jewish practices, thanks to Paul. But the, the point that I'm making is that Jesus says, I'm here for this, and Paul says, I'm here for that. Jesus says, you change absolutely nothing, and, and he brings it to a, an extreme uh, degree. And Paul says, we don't have to obey those cursed laws. Jesus has freed us from them. Of course, that's not what Jesus said. Remember, the word apostle was reserved for those who were with Jesus and witnessed his doings. Paul claimed to be an apostle, and the Christian church calls him an apostle. Even though he was not involved or even knew Jesus, he had died long before Paul. Well, if you take uh, the conventional Christian Lutheran sort of view of, of Paul, he is uh, a convert from Judaism to Christianity. Paul not only becomes a follower of the sect he persecuted, but imagines himself to be an apostle and an authority on Jesus. Out of nowhere, the guy says, you know, I'm not only a Christian, I'm an apostle. I'm on the level with the, the guys that Jesus actually taught. And uh, he, uh, however it happens, he doesn't say in the epistles, uh, the uh, stories in Acts of the Damascus Road are transparently borrowed from the conversions of uh, Pentheus and Euripides the Bacchae and uh, uh, Heliodorus in 2 Maccabees chapter 3, well-known works of the time. But however it happened, he, he becomes a, uh, a Christian and 
decides that uh, the Torah is no longer binding, that Jews uh, may keep it if they wish, but they're, they're grossly mistaken, even to the point of spiritual peril if they think they must. Uh, he describes himself as being uh, born to the Jewish tradition, but he does not think we, we should follow the law as Christians. Uh, and he's being opposed there by Cephas, a lot of people say it's Peter, um, who was an actual disciple of Christ. Now in any argument between Peter and Paul, guess who would have the advantage, right? It wouldn't be Paul, it would be Peter. Peter could say to Paul all the time, listen to uh, Paul, I was with Jesus. I was a friend of Jesus and you are an interloper. You, you've never even met the guy, right? Uh, so who are you to tell me what Jesus thought? I was there and you weren't. Uh, so it's in, actually interesting that this non-disciple of Jesus ended up being so dominant in early Christianity because you know, he never met Jesus by his own account. Uh, everything he got, uh, he got from Revelation. How are we to verify that Jesus actually revealed anything to Paul? And clearly a lot of the early Christians did not agree with him. So Paul insists in Galatians that he was sent by the resurrected Christ and made the point, I'm as much sent as you are. And if you knew Jesus before the crucifixion, that doesn't make a bit of difference. Everything is new now in 2 Corinthians. Now, this seems to be the tip of an iceberg, though, where he's trying to decide a larger issue. If these Gentiles who really like our new religion want to join, but don't want to become Jews, uh, and this is very common, there were loads of Greeks and Romans going to the synagogue every Sabbath, and they said, this is great, this is better than the pagan garbage we were brought up with, these bed-hopping deities and so on, these people have a real uh, uh, faith here. But uh, to tell you the truth, I don't want to get circumcised, I don't want to stop having uh, shrimp cocktails and ham sandwiches. Uh, do you mind if I just attend and listen to the scripture and the sermons and Jews said, come on, no problem. Uh, you're not Jews, but that's all right. Well, that's the kind of issue facing Paul. I got these people lining up to, to be baptized as Christians. Do I have to tell them they've also got to be circumcised and no more ham sandwiches? Because if I do, they're going to leave. Uh, and it, can it be that important? This raised a huge problem with the Ebionites. They said, oh, look, I mean, uh, it may not be the most important thing, but Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. I mean, what, what's the last thing you think the Jewish Messiah is going to do? Is say, let's, let's just drop the Torah of Moses. We don't have no way. This is all right. It's the least of the commandments, but there's no way the Jewish Messiah is going to say that Jewish law is unimportant. So they said this Paul is an antichrist. He's a false apostle. He's a servant of the devil, especially the Ebionites. Oh, they really hated him. But Matthew did too. But remember what Jesus said. I keep saying Matthew 5:17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And then he goes on, he says, you change nothing. So, critically, if somebody today wanted to be a true advocate of Jesus, he'd be a Jew. That's what Jesus was. If he wanted to be like Jesus, he'd be a Jew.